welcome to the Feed You podcast, giving you the real scoop on raising your business to new heights. Expert education, inspiration, and motivation to fuel your purpose, your passion, and your profits. Here's your host, Elisa Connor. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Feed You Podcast. I'm Elisa Connor. I appreciate you being here, whether this is your first time listening or you're here every week with me. I want to say happy spring. It is the first day of spring as this episode is going live. And if you're like me and you are um, ready for some sunshine, we actually had a blizzard here in Colorado last week, so I am really ready for some sunshine. I am appreciating the birds singing in the morning and just uh, ready to plant those spring seeds and see what transpire, transpires. Not only, um, you know, literally plant the seeds, but figuratively planting those seeds in our business. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to kind of create this episode for you all to get you thinking about, you know, where you want to stretch yourself this year, where you want to grow into your business. Um, I have found that starting my goals in January really doesn't work for me. And so I'm going to switch it up a little bit this year and really start my Q1 in April. I have some really exciting stuff happening in April, and I'm going to share that with you in April in the podcast. So stay tuned for that. Um, But I'm just finding that the winter months for me are just kind of a time for me to go internally and process a little bit more on the internal scale, like what do I really want? Where do I want to go? And I think when I try to jump into just starting off the new year, it doesn't work for me. So I am taking a cue from a good friend of mine who starts her um, Q1 in April. And that's where I'm going this year. I've I've just kind of switched things up and decided I'm going to start my Q1 in April. And so it got me thinking about, you know, what is it we need to do in order to stretch ourselves to grow to the next level? And that can be in your business. It can be in your personal life. It can be a physical goal or an emotional goal or a spiritual goal. um, Because we touch on all of those things in this podcast. So I wanted to tell you just a little bit about a, a story that's going on with me right now. I actually am going back to the gym after a hiatus, probably about a two year hiatus. And I have been, you know, working out on my own. Um, I do cycling and I I love to go out and walk. Obviously, I love to be in nature and I live really close to a lake. So it's really easy for me to get out and go and be with nature and just appreciate where I live. But it doesn't drive me the way going to the gym does. And so I have a friend who actually poked and prodded me and got me to go last week to a a new gym. And it was interesting to just sort of be the observer of myself. I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but where you just observe where you are and where you have been. Now, I used to be somewhat of a gym rat. I trained for a triathlon. I was in the gym, you know, some days, five hours a day. And that was a very different time in my life. And I was much younger. And so I think sometimes when we're starting over, we're starting something new, we have a tendency to create a vision of what that should look like or what we should look like in that position. And as I was going through the group training last week at gym, in the gym, I was kind of beating myself up. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I can't do all these push-ups. I can't do this anymore. I can't do burpees. And I started comparing myself to a place in my life that I am no longer in. And I start thinking about, you know, when I was training for my triathlon, I was 39 and getting ready to turn 40. I actually turned 40 the month after my triathlon. And I was thinking, you know, this body has been through a lot of stuff since then. And not only physically, but emotionally. And so it's really hard to compare where you are now to where you were. And I think we often as entrepreneurs and as business owners, we not only compare our journey of expectation of where we are and where we wanna be, but we compare ourselves to others' journeys and where they are and where we think we should be with them. And I know I am guilty of this. And I think anybody that's on their own and has their own business has done this or does this regularly. And I just want, to create kind of a a pact with everybody to say, let's not do that anymore because it sucks. Um, Especially when we're comparing, you know, our beginning of our journey to somebody else's middle or, you know, further along in the journey. 
Um, I think it's really easy for us to compare ourselves to those people that are mentors or the people that we look up to, but we forget they've been in business for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, and they've learned a ton of stuff along the way. So as we talk about growing um, and growing ourselves and stretching ourselves in our business, one thing that I have found as I've gotten older that really helps me physically to excel and get better and to just feel better all together is yoga. And I know I talk about yoga here and there. And um, what I love about yoga is that it actually makes you slow down and focus on your breath. And I think that when we are in our entrepreneurial world, every day, we're, we're kind of like we have these lists, and we're going, 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 and we don't take any time to breathe. And when you don't take that time to breathe, and you don't take that time to focus on just being in the moment, even if it's for five minutes, it's really hard to get any creativity or clarity about where you're going, who you serve, or how you're helping. And those are the things that are really going to move your business forward. And so I have committed to myself that at least um, half an hour a day, I'm giving myself half an hour a day just for me, not kids, not work, to do something that enables me to just go within, stop, breathe, and not think about growing the business, um, creating content, creating courses, whatever that might be. And just giving myself that, that opportunity to just kind of recharge. And so if you take anything away from this episode, I hope that that is the piece that you take away is that you give yourself a break to either whatever that looks like for you two or three times a day, or maybe it's one long period a day, but just give yourself the opportunity to recharge and re-energize and revisit where you want to be. So let's get into the episode. And I have um, several examples and points for you. I think I came up with three points um, or three ways to stretch and um, grow yourself and not only your business. Um, So first, we we kind of talked or I talked about this a little bit earlier, but you know, it's okay to start over again. And I think (laughs) I know I have been in this this position. And I'm sure many of you can relate that you know, we, we start a business and we have this great idea. And we're like, Oh, this is it. This is the one this is the thing that's going to make me um, more money or give me notoriety or whatever it might be. And then when it doesn't work out, or it starts to shift, we freak out. We're like, what? No, that can't be. It has to be this way. And I think if we give ourselves the grace to realize that our business is not going to be the same on today as it is in a year, five years, six months, three months, I have seen it not only with my business, but I've seen it with the businesses of people that I have networked with for the last two, three, four, five. Some of these people are on their sixth, seventh, eighth business. Um, I have sort of stayed in the same realm, but when I started my business as Ripple Effect Marketing, it was solely based on social media, social media uh, implementation, training, and education. So it doesn't look like that anymore. I realized with social media, it it just wasn't a good fit for me. And so my business evolves and it continues to evolve as I grow and change. So I'm giving you permission, even if you won't give it to yourself, to be okay with starting over or reformatting what your business looks like or just tweaking it a little bit. And I want you to be okay with that as well. And I, if I have to, um, I guess I'm going to admit to you, you know, there's a lot of like shame sandwich that goes with this. Like sometimes you start a business and you're like, oh, you know, why do I suck? And I, you know, it's easy to say that, like, why, you know, I'm so ashamed that I am starting over again. But I think, I think we forget like how brave we are as entrepreneurs, Like there's people that talk for years and years and years about starting their own business and doing this and doing that. But the reality is, is they just talk about it. They never step out and do it. And when you're out here in the trenches, and trust me, they are trenches, um, you have a brave face. And to smash it with, with like a shame sandwich because you're not doing it the way that your brain thinks you should have done it, I just wanna say, let's not do that anymore. It's just not okay and 
um, you know, pat yourself on the back, give yourself like a thumbs up and go, you know what, I'm doing this. I am fully invested. I'm doing it. I'm working at it every day. And just give yourself some grace to embrace that journey and that um, bravery that you've taken on. So my first my first tip for you is just just to be okay with starting over again and be okay with what that looks like. Be okay with embracing the change and realize that you're not going to be the same person today as you will be tomorrow or that you were yesterday. And just be okay with that. Be okay with the evolving journey because the biggest key of, about being an entrepreneur is that it's not just about growing your business and about creating success. It's about who you become along the way. And if you're not evolving and you're not changing, then there's probably a reason your business isn't growing and evolving and changing as well. So um, something you can do when you're going through the thought process of changing and the thought process of tweaking something is just to question yourself, get some quiet time, take, you know, take a few minutes to just either meditate or close your eyes and just ask yourself some questions. You know, is this really something you want to do? Is this really the direction you want to move in? Is it something that you need to do in order to grow the business or change the business? Or is it something you even like to do? If it's not something you like to do or you don't want to do, then find a power partner, find find somebody you can outsource that to, you know, create that person on your team and just realize that, you know, spend your time doing the things that one you love and that you're good at because that's where you're going to make the money. The other piece is like, if you're just doing it because someone else is doing it, don't, don't do it. I'm just going to be plain out and say, just don't do it because that is for that person. Your, your gift and your um, genius zone and your purpose, those belong to you and nobody else can do them the way you're going to do them. So when you're moving into that space and you're thinking, oh, I need to switch it up and do this or I need to do that, just really go inside and ask those questions. And it's OK. I mean, I think the best way to do that is just to journal because it gets you out of your head. And um the example I came up with for this, in case you need an example of what this looks like, is you know if you were going to do meal prep for your week, and a lot of people do meal prep because it's easy, they're busy, um, and they get it done, and then they don't have to think about okay, I'm going to have this for lunch, or I'm going to have that, or I'm going to take this, or whatever. So sometimes you really want to do that meal prep. You want to create a menu, and you want to go shopping, and you and you really want to get it done. You really want to like you know just have it done, have an easy fix to go to. You have your um, salads created, or you know whatever it is you you've decided to do for yourself. And sometimes you really need to do those things too because you need to eat healthier, you need to lose weight, you want your family to be fed healthier meals, whatever that looks like. Um, And then you also, you might like that. You might actually like to do meal prep. Some people, I loved to be in the kitchen and meal prep. And to me, chopping is very therapeutic. Like I love to chop carrots and celery and onion. It's just, it's very um, repetitive and it gets me out of my head. And so like making a soup or a salad or something like that is actually very meditative for me because I can just focus on chopping and I don't have to think about anything else. And, um, but you may be the opposite. You may be like, um, I hate prepping food. I hate chopping and I don't want to do it. So then the option for you is that you find somebody that you can outsource that to. There are personal chefs out there. There are meal service plans. Um, so if you really wanted to, to plan your meals and prep your meals and have that taken care of, there are options, but you wouldn't know the answer to that if you're not asking yourself these questions. And so, do the same thing with your business. You know, look at your business and say, okay, I hate writing emails. So then if you don't like writing emails, what is an option for you to outsource that? Do you have a VA you could bring on? Do you have a a copywriter you can work with and, um, you know, build as you grow? What does it look like for that? So that is my, um, my suggestion or my tip for, um, starting to, stretch yourself and grow a little bit and thinking about where you were and where you want to go. Now, another misnomer or myth that we get in our heads is that we're too old to do things or we don't have enough experience to do something or whatever it might be. We get in our own way a lot. And um, one of the lies I tell myself all the time is, 
I'm running out of time. Um, I'm going to be 48 this year and I'm running out of time. I got to get the, I got to make this thing work. And that's not true because the universe, and, and I believe the universe has its own time schedule. And no matter when we think it needs to be done, or we need, to, we think that something needs to happen, it will happen when it's supposed to happen. And when we are ready internally, emotionally, mentally, physically, all of those things um, are in alignment to make that happen. And so one of the things that I've been beating myself up about is I'm, I'm trying to launch uh, my online program and I've just been sitting on it and sitting on it, but it, it's percolating. And so I'm giving myself grace around that because I know that the timeline I have in my mind is that it should have been launched a year ago is not necessarily the timeline that is in congruence with where my business is going. And I've had to do some tweaking and shifting and figuring out really, you know, what are the pieces that I love doing that I'm really good at before I launched this program. And so giving yourself grace and not beating yourself up because you're not meeting those timelines or you're not meeting them when you think you should be is really, um, it's a gift you can give to yourself and just know that everything happens in divine timing whether it's the universe or God or however you believe, it's all going to happen at, for your best good at the time it's supposed to happen. And so don't ever be afraid to start something or learn something new or keep growing because all of those things will lead you to the path of where you're supposed to be and the next step you're supposed to take. Um, I've seen it with, I have a good friend, Felicia Jones. She's actually been on the podcast. I've seen this with her journey and it's been really fun to watch. Um, where she was and where she's going now. She's, she still does some budgetology, budget, uh, budgetology, um, information. And that's still part of her program, but it's been really fun to see how she's evolving as a speaker and now helping other people become speakers. And I don't know that if you were to ask her, you know, two years ago that she would have even said, yeah, I'm going to be a speaker or I'm going to help people find speaking engagements. She probably would look and go, no, I just decided to do this. And from there, from that action, it has led to a different path. And I really think that's what the journey of entrepreneurship and, you know, having your own business is about. It's not about staying stagnant. It's not about staying in the same spot and just you know, drudgery and doing things just to do them because they make you money. If that were the case, you would have stayed in corporate or you would have just go, just go get another job. I mean, that's the the point of being an entrepreneur and having your own business is evolving more into yourself and embracing all of those pieces of you that are different from everyone else out there and bringing that gift and that purpose to the world. So there is never, um, a a too late. It's never going to be not on time and the universe has it handled. So uh, I came up with some examples for those of you that think that, you know, um, there's no way I'm going to make it if I'm well at 48 or 50 or 55 or 30 or 25 or whatever it is. Um, And I had four different here. I, some of you may know about these examples, but there was a couple that surprised me. Um, Martha Stewart actually did not even start her magazine, her Martha Stewart living magazine until she was almost 50. Now she went back after having kids and started her catering career, but she didn't actually start anything that she was known for that blossomed from her magazine until she was 50. And so I took that as like, holy cow, that's kind of awesome because it isn't too late. No, it just gets better from that. Um, Another one that I came up with was Justine Bateman, who had a very um, prolific acting career. I mean, she was really well known in the 80s and 90s for acting, actually left acting and was trying to find a job. And she was looking through like monster.com listings and all the online job listings. And like every other one was for a programmer or a developer. And she's like, I don't have the skills. So she decided at 48 to go back to school and learn how to be a programmer and a developer. And that's what she does now. And so I thought that was kind of cool too, because again, she was in her late forties and um, started a whole new career and just went with it and went with something that she was interested in. Now, Ray Kroc, I have a, I have a little bit of heart love for Ray Kroc and his wife. 
um, because I went on a mission trip this past summer, which I, I think I talked about in another episode. But um, the Croc Foundation is one of the ways that the Croc family gave back in big ways to help inner city youth and homeless um, to have an opportunity to live a normal life. They have things like rec centers that have after school and before school care. Um, they have summer camps. They have um, all kinds of opportunities for for kids and places. Uh, it creates a, a space, a safe space for those kids to go after school so that they're not on the inner city streets. And they have locations in like San Diego, where there's a big homeless problem, San Francisco, Chicago. Um, and they donated. Um, so Ray Kroc's wife, who her name is escaping me for, at the moment, I'm sorry, it'll come to me in a minute, but um, do, gave the largest donation to create these croc centers because she grew up in a very um poor southern town and she knew what it was like to not have the amenities of like a swimming pool or a basketball court and so she wanted to make sure that um she was giving back to a cause that enabled other people to not have to have that same childhood um so ray croc for those of you that don't know is the founder of mcdonald's and he didn't even start McDonald's until he was 51. And so I went on a little bit of a side note there, but I just have such a passion for what they did and um, for the people they help. And then last but not least, many of you probably know about Colonel Sanders, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. He actually didn't start building that business until he was 40. And so there's time is the is the point of all this, is the universe has, um, a time frame and a plan and it's ever shifting and there's no nowhere in there is there a clause that says it's too late for you it's too late to learn something new or start something new or grow something new and I think we talk ourselves into that as an excuse because we're afraid to try so if you are out here and you're trying and you're in the trenches as an entrepreneur and you're like oh this didn't work and you start beating yourself up because you're gonna try something new just stop just stop beating yourself up try it And um, all of my mentors that I have looked up to for the last, you know, five, six, seven years as I've started my business will all tell you the same, this one same thing. Fail fast and fail often because the more you fail, the more you learn. And those may not be the exact words they use, but I can tell you what, if you asked nearly any successful person out there how many failures they had until they got to where they are now, they would all be able to list a litany of of failures that they had to go through because you have to do that in order to stretch and grow and become who you are and grow your business and grow your financial wealth and grow your influence and grow your impact on this world. And then um, the last piece for this point is that I just really want to encourage you to be open to serendipity um, because you never know when you're open to opportunity or ideas or suggestions where that's going to lead you and it could very well be you know you're in one position and you just get an idea you get a brainstorm and you're like i'm just going to try this and that may lead you down the path you're you're intended to go on or the new general direction that you didn't even know existed before so if i had one piece of advice in this area it would be to just be open to serendipity and what it has to offer you that person that you you met at a networking event or that influencer that gave you five minutes of their time or um, the blog article that came into your inbox today that you were meant to read so just be open to that and be um open to unplanned moments and unplanned events Last but not least, and this is probably the most important piece about growing and stretching and um, just really becoming one with your business and becoming, you know, the reason that you're here. And that's, you're not going to probably like it, but none of this is about you. I mean, even though you're growing and stretching and becoming who you are, you're here to serve other people. And um, the way that you show up to do that is what will impact your financial success, your influencer success. Um, You see what happens when you aren't being of service. People get really 
bored, frustrated, and annoyed with you. They don't want to hear about your products and services. And so the companies that are moving forward and making a mark are those that are serving forward um, and creating a relationship and creating um, a long standing or a long lasting um, commitment and back and forth relationship with their customers. And so you don't know who you're going to impact. And so when you come from a place of service and you come from a place of, this is what I have as a gift to offer, and this is this is how I can help, and you go from that, that place of helping, um, you are much more likely to attract not only the people that resonate with your message, but the people that need and want to work with you. And so when you're sharing your knowledge and your experience and your story and your value that will come across as value and you start to trust your gut it will automatically attract the people that are meant to be attracted to you the like-minded um, thinkers the like-minded souls will automatically be attracted to you and want to work with you like they will just pop out of the woodwork but a lot of that comes from being confident in you and yourself and your message and being okay with not being everybody's cup of tea Um, It's just like, you know, not everyone likes to drink Coke. Some people like to drink Pepsi. Well, there's a reason, and some people like Sprite. Some people like Dr. Pepper. There's a reason that all of these different soap pops can exist is because not everyone has the same taste. And it goes with, the same goes with your business. You know, not everyone is going to like the way I design websites. They're going to like, say, another designer's look and feel. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Not everyone's going to like the way that, um, you know, the, the topics that I cover on this podcast. And that's okay. There are billions of other podcasts out there for them to listen to. But the right people that need to hear what I have to tell them and need to have, you know, um, someone work with them the way that I work with them will show up if I trust in that and I allow space for that to happen. Um, so, a lot of that is based on your intuition and just being in touch again, you know, going back to what I said in the, be- in the beginning of this episode is being in touch with, you know, what you really want. Um, so I thought it would be helpful to give you some ways to get in touch with your intuition, because if you really listen to what's going on internally, it will never be, re- it'll never lead you wrong. But I think we have so much noise in our world between social media and the news and, Um, all of the daily commitments that pull us in different directions, it's really hard to tune into that intuition sometimes. So I have, let's see, 10 tips to help you grow your intuition. Number one um, is to just make some time to be quiet and listen. And this doesn't have to be like, you know, you're on a retreat every single day and for an hour you have to be completely silent and um, be like a Buddhist monk because most of us can't do that. This can be, you know, five minutes, three times a day or two minutes, three times a day where you just, you know, shut everything off and just close your eyes and listen. And um, it's not going to be easy at first. Your brain will just be like the whole time, monkey mind. But it's okay because if you just allow yourself to have that monkey mind, eventually it'll get easier and it'll be easier to go a little longer. Um, So that's number one, is just to be quiet and listen. Number two is to recognize when your intuition is giving you uh, a nudge and to be grateful for that. Because how many times have you had that gut feeling of, oh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to take that street today. And then you do and you're in a traffic jam. And or, you know, or the opposite. Um, You get a gut feeling that you're not going to go... Um, You're not going to book a flight on this certain day and you book it the next day. And then you realize later that if you would have booked it on the original day, you would have been stuck in a blizzard and you would have not been able to get out anyway. Um, So if we listen to those, those gut checks and um, you know, it can be something even as I do this a lot with food for me, because I have a lot of food sensitivity. Um, You know, I'll think about, oh, I should have that. And then I'll stop and kind of listen to myself before I eat it. And then if I do that, it'll usually say, "Hmm, yeah, no, don't, you don't want to have that. Because if you have that, it's, you're going to have problems later. 
on the times that I, you know, that I do sneak like um, maybe a, a bite of cupcake or something because I have a gluten intolerance or, you know, I'll, I'll just say, screw it and I'll have something. Um, if I would have listened to my gut, I would have realized that was not a good plan because then it led to, you know, stomach issues later. So just kind of recognize what your intuition is trying to tell you and it'll get easier the more you recognize it and then always be thankful um, because it's training your intuition to talk to you more when you when you approach it with gratitude. So anytime you put gratitude out into the world, it will increase um, the opportunity for you to be grateful. That's just energy. That's just how it works. Um, and then this is this is a hard one. Um, another way to to kind of manifest or grow your your intuition is to ask really specific questions, but not expect really specific answers. And that's really hard because we put it out there and like, uh, we think we know what we want the answer to be. But in reality, that may not be the best um, answer for us or for our growth or for who we are becoming. And so when you put out a question, I mean, it's very, very, um, it's very good practice to put out a specific question. But just be aware that the universe may not answer in the way that you expect or your intuition may not answer in the way that you expect or want it to. So just be open to what the answer is, because the answer they, you know, the universe and um, your intuition will continue to show you the answer until you get it. But you may not be um, open or aware to it. And so you're expecting the answer to be one thing and then it's not. And um, not being aware to what the answer really is, is not helping grow your intuition or listening to your intuition. So number four um, is to just write down answers. So if you say you're journaling, a lot of times I'll journal a question and I'll just keep asking myself like three or four times the same question because it enables me to really dig into the answer um, and not just have, um, you know, the, the first answer that pops up is not necessarily the, the answer that is best for me. Um, the quote that always comes up in my mind from Marianne Williamson is the, the ego answers first and the ego um, speaks loudest. And so it was something like that. I think I butchered it, but who cares? Um, <clears throat> but the ego speaks first and the ego speaks loudest. So whenever you're asking a question, of course, your, your ego or your, um, uh, your brain is going to answer versus your intuition. So if when you keep asking that question and writing down the answers, you're going to really feel it in your gut and you're going to feel it in your heart. What is truly the right answer for you in your life and how to grow and move forward. Um, and then here's a biggie. When you get those answers and you've written them down and you've had that um, inkling from your intuition, which is usually a nudge, it's not a shout. Um, take action on that. Take action on it. And then I love um, this is this is probably my favorite part is after you take action, write it down somewhere, document it, say, hey, I took action on this nudge and um, this is what happened. And then keep documenting because sometimes that little nudge will lead you here, lead you here, lead you here. And then you forget that you had asked originally and you don't realize that all along the way your intuition was leading you to where you needed to be. Um, and then let's see. Um, oh, this is a good one. Um, Another way to tune into your intuition is to be aware of your dreams. And one of the ways that you can do this is to have a dream journal next to your bed. And it can easily just be a notebook where you write things down. But a lot of times we'll wake up in the middle of the night. Like I have this habit of waking up at 3 4 o'clock. And um, I don't know why <laughs> I wake up at that time. It's kind of annoying. But if you have a dream journal and you can just jot down a few thoughts, Often um, they won't make sense in the moment, but it gives you the opportunity to review it later. And it also will help you go back to sleep because your brain can be like, okay, we can let that go. She wrote it down. Um, but watching your dreams and documenting your dreams, it doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means in the dreams. So if you're looking for a really great resource to help you analyze your dreams, I highly recommend Dreams 123 by J.M. DeBoard. It's not only a great way to help you kind of take a deeper look at your dreams, but also the subconscious stories behind those dreams. Again, it's Dreams 123 by J.M. DeBoard. Analyze those dreams and see, you know, what are they really about and what are, what, um, 
what are they trying to tell me that I'm not getting in my waking hours? Because your intuition and your subconscious will continue to talk to you when you're not awake. Um, but you may not get the message. So monitor your dreams, track your dreams, keep a dream journal and just analyze, you know, what what's going on there. It doesn't mean spend your whole life, but you know, spend a couple minutes looking at it and going, oh, because as you do it over and over again, you're going to realize that the same messages keep coming up until you um, gain clarity on it consciously. Um, another way to improve your intuition is to get out of your head, literally go do something creative, go exercise, journal, cook. Like one of the ways that I get out of my head, I, I told you earlier is to just make food in the kitchen. Like that's just something that I love and I enjoy. So whatever that is for you, um, when you're feeling stuck or you're feeling like you don't have a new idea or you can't come up with um, content or you can't come up with a way to say what you need to say or you're just frustrated, is just to get out of your head for a little bit. And it doesn't have to be a long period of time, you know? 15, 20, 30 minutes is that's a good amount of time for you to just not think about, you know, your business and growing and moving forward. And I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we feel like we have to be at our computer all day long. And really, that's not how we excel. It's not how we move forward. Um, Being, you know, out and energizing ourselves in whatever way that is. And maybe for you, it's out networking or being around people. Um, A lot of times if I just feel like I need a people fix, I'll just go work at a coffee shop or I'll go to the library. Um, There are opportunities to just be around other people and just, even if you're not talking to them, just being exposed to their energy will shift your energy too. So um, get outside of your head in any way that is comfortable for you and that makes you feel good. Now, of course, number eight is to get out in nature. Um, One of the best ways to get out of your head is just to go for a walk, even if it's a quick 15 minute walk um, and just get out and, you know, see the world. I think sometimes we get very navel focused when we are entrepreneurs because we are, we spend a lot of time alone. We spend a lot of time thinking about our business and growing our business. um, And we don't take time to just go out and see that there's a big world out there. And so get out in nature. And then um, number nine for you is to go on a retreat, get out, get out of your own way for, you know, a weekend, go on a organized retreat or an unorganized retreat, just do something that is helpful to you to just step away from your business. It doesn't mean you don't have to think about it all weekend. It just means that go with the intention of listening to your intuition and not with an agenda of things you need to get done. Um, and maybe you split the time, maybe you do half just brainstorming and creating and giving yourself the opportunity to, um, think up new ideas and listen to yourself. And then half the time actually creating a plan to implement those ideas, whatever that looks like for you. One of my favorite places to go in Colorado is Sacred Heart and it is a, um, Jesuit retreat center. And so one of the kind of cool things about there is that it's a silent retreat house, which means when you have meals, um, and as you're walking around, you really not, they don't want you talking. They want people to just quietly and introspectively, um, go through their retreat process. Now that doesn't mean you can't talk. They just want it to be quiet. So, um, if you are not good with silence and being, you know, quiet the whole time, then it may not be the best fit for you. But I know there are also yoga retreats out there, Um, There are guided retreat centers that all over. So just find what works best for you and um, give yourself the opportunity to do that and gift yourself the opportunity to receive the answers from your intuition. And then last but not least, listen to your body because your body will not lead you wrong. Um, Just like when you're thinking about grabbing that piece of cheesecake and your stomach kind of turns, probably a good idea to not eat the cheesecake because your body is saying to you, if you listen, don't eat that cheesecake because you're going to be in the bathroom for three hours. Um, or, you know, if, if you have, uh, an interaction with somebody and it, they just don't, it just feels yucky. Like, I don't know how to describe it. You're just going to know it in your body. That's probably not the best person for you to align yourself with. And just being aware of, of the uh, messages your body is sending you when you start to become aware of them and you start to listen to them, more of them will show up. And so being aware of what your body is telling you and, you know, we carry emotion in our body, everything that happens um, will display itself or show up in our body somehow, whether it's stress or anger or grief or frustration, it's going to show up either by pain or um, depending on, you know, how long you don't listen. 
Um, it'll show up as pain in your body or it'll show up as a trigger of some sort where you're, if you listen, your body will go like, oh, she's listening now. Um, then, you know, the pain goes away. But if you don't listen and it continues on and on and on, then you're going to have continual pain and um, until you get the message. So that is what I have for you today. I hope that all of these tips are useful to you and that you think about them as you're stretching and growing and planting those seeds in your business this spring. Um, Even if you started your, your year in January, you still, this is the time to create. This is the time to, um, you know, plant the seeds and build whatever it is that's new in your business. And so I'm hoping that, you know, with these three tips, number one, to um, be okay with starting again and starting where you are. Number two, to, embrace that it's okay to learn at any age and to start at any age and to give yourself grace if you are changing things up. And then number three is to just listen to your your intuition. Focus on your intuition, listen to your gut, and it's never going to lead you wrong. So thanks so much for tuning in this week. I will be here again next week. And we are talking about oh five reasons your website is not making you money so going back to a business episode next week um i find a lot of people out there struggle with their website so we're going to talk about those five things that your website is either missing or doing wrong and why you're not making money off your website so thanks again for tuning in i will see you next week in the meantime happy spring and have a great week take care this episode is being brought to you by my new free training how to create an irresistible opt-in that people actually want. You know you need an opt-in. Everyone's told you you need an opt-in. What they haven't told you is what to create, how to create it, and for the love of Pete, how to connect it to both your email service provider and your website. That's why I've created this free training to give you the inside scoop about how to do all of those things. You don't want to miss this free training, so take this time right now to go sign up at elisaconnor.com forward slash simple because I am going to help you create the simplest process that you can repeat again and again every time you need to create a new opt-in and a new download that attracts those people, grows your lists, and grows your business. Again, join me for the free training at elisaconnor.com forward slash simple. See you inside. www.alisaconnor.com forward slash podcast.